Sir Thomas Smythe or Smith C. to 4 September 1625, was an English merchant, politician and colonial administrator. He was the first governor of the East India Company and treasurer of the Virginia Company from 1609 to 1620 until enveloped by scandal. <laughs> Early life The second surviving son of Thomas, customer, Smythe of Westenhanger Castle in Kent, by his wife Alice, daughter of Sir Andrew Judd. His grandfather, John Smythe of Corsham, Wiltshire, was described as yeoman, haberdasher, and clothier, and was High Sheriff of Essex for the year of 1532. His father was also a haberdasher, and was customer of the Port of London. He purchased Westenhanger from Sir Thomas Sackville, and other property from Robert Dudley, Earl of Leicester. Thomas Smythe's elder son, Sir John Smythe or Smith 1556, of Westenhanger, was High Sheriff of Kent in 1600, and father of Thomas Smythe, 1st Viscount Strangford. Thomas Sr., one of thirteen children, was brought in his father's business, and was educated at Merchant Taylor's School 1571. Topic. Business and political career In 1580, young Smythe was admitted to the freedom of the Worshipful Company of Haberdashers and also of the Worshipful Company of Skinners. He quickly rose to wealth and distinction after entering politics to augment his business. Smythe was made auditor for the City of London from 1597 to 1598, and treasurer of St. Bartholomew's Hospital from 1597 to 1601. In 1597, he was briefly elected to Parliament for Aylesbury. In 1599, he was elected alderman for Farringdon without and chosen as one of the two sheriffs of the City of London for 1600. Smythe financed numerous Elizabethan era trade ventures and voyages of exploration during the early 17th century. In 1592, Smythe obtained settlement rights to the Virginia colony from Sir Walter Raleigh. When the East India Company was formed in October 1600, Smythe was appointed as its first governor by the charter dated the 31st of December, a position he held for only 4 months. In February 1600 to 1601, Smythe, serving as London's sheriff, was suspected of being a supporter of the Robert Devereux, second Earl of Essex, who on the 8th of February went to Smythe's house in Gracechurch Street. Smythe advised Essex to turn himself into the Lord Mayor of London. When Essex refused, Smythe left to confer with the Lord Mayor. When Smythe was later accused of complicity in the Essex Rebellion, he was examined before the Privy Council, he was fired from his office of sheriff and committed to the Tower of London. However, his imprisonment proved short due to Queen Elizabeth's death on 24 March 1603. On 13 May 1603, after the accession of James I, Smythe was knighted. Later that year he was re-elected to Parliament for Dunwich in place of Sir Valentine Knightley, who was chosen to sit for Northamptonshire. After one of his sons married intro the aristocracy, Smythe became part of the «court faction», along with Robert Rich, 2nd Earl of Warwick. In 1614, Smythe was elected Member of Parliament for Sandwich and for Saltash in 1622. In 1603, Smythe was re-elected governor of the East India Company, and, with one break in 1606–1607, continued to hold that office till July 1621, when he was discovered to be involved in the Virginia Company scandal. During this period, the company established trade with India. Meanwhile, in 1604, Smythe was appointed one of the receivers for the Duchy of Cornwall, and, in June, was named special ambassador to the Russian Tsar Boris Godunov. Like Smythe's grandfather, Sir Andrew Judd, Lord Mayor of London 1550 and one of the founders of the Muscovy Company, Smythe involved himself in the Muscovy trade. Sailing from Gravesend on 13 June 1603, his party arrived at Archangelsh on of July, and was taken by way of Kolmogory and Vologda to Yaroslavl, where the Tsar was. During that winter, Smythe obtained new privileges for the company. In the spring he went to Moscow to meet with associates. He returned to Archangelsh and sailed for England on 28 May 1604. 
In 1609, Smythe obtained a royal charter for the London Virginia Company. He became the new colony's treasurer and de facto non-resident governor until his resignation in 1620, two years after Raleigh's execution, and two years before a major revolt caused by Smythe's policy of «rooting out» the native people. To address the new colony's many problems, Smythe ordered both the end of religious conversion of the Native Americans and the expansion of the tobacco crop in 1620. Smythe was formally charged with enriching himself at the expense of the company. King James revoked the colony's charter in 1624, making it a royal colony instead. Although Smythe was held to be partly to blame, and despite the king's hatred of tobacco and desire to form a Christian empire, Smythe nonetheless retained the king's support. Parliamentarians urging the graft investigation included Nicholas Ferrer Smythe's former deputy and Edwin Sandys. The inquiry continued until Smythe's death in 1625. Despite the king's refusal to accept the charges against Smythe, the king's officials continued to consult Smythe on all important matters relating to shipping and to eastern trade. For several years Smythe served as one of the navy's chief commissioners. Smythe also served as governor of the Summers Islands from its split with the Virginia Company in 1614. His connection with the East India Company, the Virginia Company and the Muscovy Company, also led Smythe to promote and support voyages for the discovery of the Northwest Passage in North America. William Baffin named Smith's Sound to honor the patron of his 1616 voyage of discovery. In January 1618–19, Smythe was appointed one of the commissioners for the settlement of the differences with the Dutch which, however, after years of discussion, remained for the time, unsettled. <laughs> Private life Although his name was often spelled, Smith, it was always written, Smythe by the man himself, as well as by his extended family at Strangford. Smythe married three times. The first two wives must have died young and without issue. He was already married to his third wife, Sarah, daughter of William Blount, by the time Smythe was Sheriff of London. They had one daughter who died unmarried in 1627, and three sons, two of whom seem to have died before their father. The eldest son, Sir John Smythe of Bidborough, married Isabella Rich, daughter of Robert Rich, 1st Earl of Warwick and Penelope Devereux. Their children included Letitia Isabella Smythe d. 1714, who married John Robarts, 1st Earl of Radnor. The family, in the male line, ended with his great-great-grandson, Sir Sidney Stafford Smythe 1705-1778. Topic. Death and legacy Smythe died at Sutton at Hone in Kent on 4 September 1625, and was buried in the local church. An elaborate monument to his memory was installed there. During his lifetime, Smythe amassed a large fortune, a considerable part of which he devoted to charitable purposes. He endowed the Free School of Tunbridge, which was founded by his grandfather, Sir Andrew Judd. He also established several charities for the poor of the parish of Tunbridge. A portrait belonging to the Skinner's Company has been identified with Smythe, though it has been supposed to be that of Sir Daniel Judd. An engraving by Simon Pass is inserted in the Grenville copy of Smith's Voyage and Entertainment in Russia London, 1605, It is reproduced in Wadmore's Memoir 1892. <laughs> Notes <laughs>